Hello everyone, welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today, as you can see, we'll be taking a look at Avira's brand new free antivirus. This is their version 2015, and it does look uh, a little bit better than the previous version. So let's go ahead and take a look at their user interface. The core layout once again remains the same, however, they have updated their button design and it looks slightly better, but I still feel that there's quite a lot of scope for improvement here. I mean, this layout is pretty outdated. They could come up with some big buttons over here, or maybe, um, you know, an overview, a better overview of the interface rather than this thing. I do like the fact that the firewall shows us turned on. That's the Windows firewall. And, uh, well, they have an Upgrade Now button, they have to do that. It's not too annoying, and I actually prefer this compared to stuff like AVG, who have a big banner over here asking you to buy their paid version. So, this is a lot better. But at the same time, this user interface is still fairly outdated. As you can see, the scan user interface, the real-time protection, I still feel that they could improve on this. But anyway, I'm not going to complain about this too much. It's functional. That's all that matters. You can do your scan and updates really easily from here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at their advanced settings. Now, Fira do claim to have added a lot of zero-day protection in their recent versions. They have got a new cloud service, and it's going to be more and more active. Now on detection, the protection is set to interactive, so it's probably going to ask me what to do. That's for the scan. And the heuristics, the ahead heuristics, the macrovirus heuristics, they're both turned on, and ahead is set to medium detection level. Real-time protection, not a lot to mess around with here. I think that's something that I really wish Avira would work on. I mean, they don't seem to be having all that many features when it comes to zero-day protection. They do mention some things like, if we go into general, I'm sure we'll find something called security, okay, advanced protection. There we have the protection cloud. We can manually send suspicious files to Fira. So cloud is activated in real-time scanning. In fact, this is an option that has been added in the recent versions. I haven't seen this before. So I'm happy that this option is there, but then again, I'm not so happy that this is all they have to offer. I would hope for more customizability of this cloud component. But then again, they're probably still working on that, and they want it to be as easy to use as possible for the user. But for advanced users, I still feel that this product needs a bit of work. I mean, it needs some more customizability maybe some more cloud scanning options. Maybe they could tell us more about how this module works because for you know, testing, it's really difficult because I have no idea how and how much this component is going to interfere before I start the test. And it's difficult for me to know what exactly happened and which component actually worked because it just notifies you when a virus is detected. So as far as internet protection or firewall goes, it uses Windows Firewall. Not very advanced once again, but it's a free application, so can't complain about that. So that's basically it for the settings. Now we'll just go ahead and take a look at their memory usage. And the memory usage is really good. Avira never have been too heavy. And this version is no different. We've got like, what, 20 megabytes at max, I guess. So that's pretty good. I have no problems with the memory usage at all. So let's go ahead and do a check for updates. Now, once again, this user interface, I'm not a big fan of. I wish they would change their scan and update interface to make it look a little bit more modern. I mean, this is really, it looks kind of outdated to me. It works, it's functional. But then again, I feel they could make it look a little bit more appealing to the normal users. And 
just for an extra touch, they could just remove this Afira free antivirus, this part, and make it more integrated within the application and not have these close and minimize buttons over here. But then again, that's just my preference. Uh, some people may like this. So I'm not going to bother too much about that. So now let's get started with the testing. I have quite a few new malicious URLs. These are fairly recent. Let's try them out and we'll see what Avira can do to protect us. Let's go ahead and run the first file, solar.exe, and it looks like it was blocked. That's good. So I'll go ahead and remove it. Now this is another something that I'm not a big fan of. It scans the system every single time that you try to you know, it detects a file. So whenever you try to run a malicious file, it is going to do this short system scan. I guess it's not too annoying for a user because, I mean, how many times a day does a user come across malware? But for the purpose of this test, it does provide some hurdles. Here's the next file. And it could not be downloaded. Once again, I suspect Avira has blocked this one because it was working before the test. I did try it out. So let's go ahead and check the real-time scanning. Does look like it was blocked. So let's continue. I'm seeing more and more of these Google domains appear as malicious URLs these days. This is a screensaver file. Once again, could not be downloaded, so let's check out the Afira real-time shield. Yes, we can see that file here, so it was blocked. Afira has a really good track record when it comes to blocking files with signatures, so I'm definitely expecting a good result. Once again, security alert. I feel their, their alert system also could be improved. I mean, the way it just pops in and pops out sometimes can be confusing whether or not it responded to your clicking of the remove button. Okay, funny file name there. But apparently the last file just failed to download because if here it isn't... Okay, it was scanned. There you go. But it doesn't show as malware found. So that's interesting. But then again, it didn't work, so... I'll give Avira the benefit of the doubt and I'll just say it blocked it. Now this is another funny file name, Norton Security. I really feel sorry for Norton because their name is misused a lot. And if somebody ever got infected by this, uh, they'd, be, they'd think twice before installing Norton. Once again, file detected. So Avira is doing a fairly good job. The system scan, however, seems to have been you know, improved a little bit, so it's faster now. That's a relief. Now this is our last link. And it was cut. So an absolute clean sheet for Avira in this section. Which is not a huge surprise. Because they do have really good signatures. It's one of the best. So now I'm going to 
you know, just run CCleaner just to get rid of some temp files that might have remained because I know Avira, in Avira's case it does happen very frequently. So I'll clear out the temp files and then we'll get to the second part of the test in which we'll be testing against a lot more samples and we'll get to see how much their detection rate actually amounts to. So we have got some uninvited guests on our desktop as you can see. There are 535 files. There might be a few duplicates here and there. It's really difficult to identify and remove them, but we'll see how many of your can detect. So I've temporarily disabled the real-time protection just so that it doesn't you know, keep detecting them in real time, which is not what I want to see. So I'll just do a right-click scan and let's see what kind of detection ratio Afira can come up with. Luke FileWalker, this is a unique scanner name. I really like that. And their scan seems to be fairly fast, which is a good thing. Almost done. And I'm just going to select all of these and I'll try to move all of them to quarantine. The removal speed is excellent as well. Seems like we're done. That was really fast. And apparently we still have 52 items remaining, so let's go ahead and do the calculations. So that's a 90.28%, and actually the detection rate would be even higher because we've got a similar type of malware taking up a lot of entries. So, you know, if you just count this as one and this as another, it just missed like three or four files. That's all. But then again, I'll just, uh, you know, count it as like 90 plus, and it's a really good detection ratio, and it didn't disappoint. It definitely had the kind of detection ratio that I was expecting. So Avira hasn't lost its edge when it, its edge when it comes to signatures. However, the most important part still awaits how it can protect us against these files that it doesn't have signatures for. So I'm going to go ahead and run these files and we'll see if their cloud service ever comes into the picture because that's something that I haven't seen too often. So here's the first file that we're going to run. And this is a potentially unwanted program. It's a POP. Go ahead and say next. And it's probably going to just grab a lot of adware from the internet. So meanwhile, I'll just run a couple of other files. But there's some good news. Some adware was blocked. Once again, it was the signatures. Not sure exactly what this Chinese thing does. Once again, it's cut. This was the one that was cut, I guess, not the other one. So I'll try to run the remaining files. Now this appears to be something more than just a piece of adware. So let's see if it does anything harmful. Doesn't seem to be working without the latest version of Java. So I'll just, okay, let's see if it gives me some malware. No, this is actually the official Java website, I guess. But anyway, I'll go ahead and install this and then we'll see what that file does. Well, Ophira had been doing pretty good so far, but the moment I got Java installed and I ran that application, it looks like things have taken a turn for the worse. As you can see, I've got tons of pop-ups now to download different kinds of PUPs and adware 
we've got this pro PC cleaner, which is definitely very annoying. And I'd like my antivirus to block this, but Avira doesn't have a signature for these. So it just let them go right through. I guess it's not too bad because I think we can easily remove these potentially unwanted programs. But, well, it's still very annoying and, well, we'll just wait and see how much damage was actually done during that period. This computer is quickly getting swarmed with a lot of adware and it's this is kind of like an infinite loop so you get more adware and then the adware downloads even more and then you have even more adware to download even more adware so it just keeps going that's like a chain reaction but anyway I'll just uh, let this stuff run I'll install whatever has already started well I, if I keep going I'll always be downloading I won't be able to finish the test because this adware won't stop coming but let's see how many of Vera can detect it has apparently detected another one so I'll just uh, let this machine run for a while and then I'll reboot the system run CCleaner and I'll be back with the final verdict from our second opinion scanners our second opinion scans are done so let's go ahead and look at them, but before that I'd just like to say that these two programs are really persistent and annoying. So let's start with Headman Pro. So it catches this as malware, but then again it's caught by Kaspersky, not a virus risk tool. And then we've got all this, um, you know, kind of adware and PUP stuff. So the results don't look too good when it comes to Hitman Pro. Well, in a way they're not too bad because there's no really you know active kind of malware in fact these PUPs are really active but there are no major infections nothing that would really cause serious damage or render this computer unusable but then again these things do count in as infections Malwarebytes found 142 infections that's a ton of stuff we've got lots of PUPs and Trojan clickers, a file in the process. So overall, I'm not too satisfied or dissatisfied with Ophira's performance. The signatures, oh no. So now it stops working for some reason. I didn't see that coming. Should load up now. Okay, finally got it back. So it didn't do too bad in the sense that it didn't let any major kind of malware in, but then again, these are really annoying. You probably don't want these on your computer. And despite having excellent signatures, it continues to remain, you know, slightly below the top tier products when it comes to real time performance. As you can see, we did get some infections through. And I still don't see a really active behavioral blocking or any kind of intrusion prevention system that would really make me consider this as a top tier product but it doesn't seem to be that way so once again excellent signatures very similar to the previous test results but still doesn't manage to shine as much as you'd want it to when it comes to zero day malware removal or detection or prevention or whatever so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. My final verdict is if you want to use Afira, probably pair it with some other kind of zero-day protection. It has got excellent signatures. I would want other companies to maybe use their signatures, but I don't feel like using this product. It doesn't seem to be sufficient protection for me. But anyway, if you're a really basic user and you just want signature-based protection, this might be a really good deal for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next Peace Security Channel video.